Hey everybody, it's Nick Manella. I'm back with another bebop chromatic exercise for you to work on to get your improvisation to the next level. So in this video, we're gonna talk about four different ways that we can use a major triad and incorporate some chromatic approaches and enclosures to get that bebop sound really happening in your playing. All right, so let's jump right into the first one. So all we're gonna use is one, three, five of a major triad. It's gonna be very easy for you to adapt these exercises to minor triads as well. Just do all the same stuff, but use the flatted third instead of the major third. So we're gonna start with just a single chromatic approach from below each note in the triad. So we start on the root, do a chromatic approach to the third, chromatic approach to the fifth, chromatic approach to the root, and then the third one more time, and then we come down. And the only reason that we're using that third twice is it just works out evenly in a measure of 4-4. Four, four. That's why we're going back up to the third again. <laughs> So this is a pretty simple exercise, and this is probably the first one that you should start with when you're looking to work in some of that chromaticism. So the second exercise we have for you still utilizes the major triad, but we're just doing the opposite of what we did before. Now we're going to lead into each triad note with a half step from above. So again, start on the root, we do a half step from above to the third, to the fifth, to the root and to the third, and then we come back down again. So now what you're doing is you're identifying the chromatic approach tone from both below each note in the triad and from above. And that is going to play perfectly into our third exercise where now we're gonna start working on enclosures. An enclosure is basically playing chromatically on both sides of that triad note and then landing on the target note of the triad. This is a little bit more advanced than those previous exercises, so make sure you work on those first and you're sounding good. You can identify each one of those chromatic approach tones before you start this one. So we're also gonna switch up the rhythm a little bit because we need to have the target notes on the beat. That's kind of essential in the bebop language is we can play as much chromaticism as we want as long as we land on one of those target notes and it should happen on the beat. It won't always be like this. You can figure out some more advanced ways of doing chromaticism where maybe those notes don't land on the beat if you have a very good reason. But for now, when you're first starting out with this stuff, just make sure that the target note is always on the beat. All right, so let's look at this exercise. So again, we're gonna start on the root, then we're gonna play the note above the third and the note below the third and then land on the third. Then we're gonna do the same thing with the fifth, above, below, target note. Then we're gonna go back up to the root and we're gonna do the same thing. Half step above, half step below, land on that root. Then we're gonna come back down, work our way back down to the root again. <laughs> It's not a super complicated exercise, but definitely going to be a lot tougher than those exercises where we were just using that single approach. Okay, and now for the fourth exercise, what we're gonna do is we're gonna mix up the order of the enclosure. So now we're gonna play the note below, then play the note above, then land on the target note. So again, you start on the root, you go, you play the chromatic note below, then you go above, target third, then you do the same thing with the fifth, below, above, target the fifth, jump up to the root, do the exact same thing, then work your way down the instrument. <laughs> So if you practice just those four exercises, just using triads, both major and minor, you're gonna notice a huge improvement in your playing. 
The other advantage to these exercises is they're kind of tough on our instruments. So you're also gonna notice a real increase in your ability to play your instrument, get around, do complicated things. It's a really fantastic exercise all around. Now I also know that you wanna ultimately be able to apply these to tunes, but let's not worry about that yet. Let's just worry about being able to play the exercises, being able to pull them off. And then on a later video, we'll talk about how to actually put this into tunes. And in fact, the beauty of these exercises is that if you're practicing them, they're gonna naturally start to come out in your improvisation without you even thinking about it. So the very first thing to do when you're learning these exercises, practice them in a couple of easy keys first, maybe the key of C, the key of F, the key of G, some of those easier keys with not a lot going on in them. And then once you start to feel comfortable as quickly as you can, start to put these in all 12 keys. And I suggest going around the circle of fourths because it's going to gently bring you into harder and harder keys. Maybe you start at the top of the circle and you go in either direction and work your way toward the bottom. And then the true test to know if you're playing these and you have a really good handle on them is to just pick random keys and play the four exercises in those keys. Maybe make some flashcards, shuffle them up, and just start playing random keys. If you can't do that, you need to practice this more. That is super important. We should be able to play any of these at any time, at any tempo. So it's a lot of work, but just about anything in jazz is a lot of work, as most of you know, that are trying to learn this language. So just jump in with both feet and start working on this stuff really slowly and carefully, and eventually you'll be a monster on this stuff. You'll be able to get around all 12 keys at really fast tempos. It'll be awesome. So if you have any questions about these, please leave them in the comments below. I would love to know if you need further explanation on any of these four exercises and let me know any difficulties you might be having in your practicing where you run into issues practicing these particular exercises and I'll try to clear that up for you. Most of all, thank you so much for watching. Hope you enjoyed the video. Remember to give us a big thumbs up if you found this useful. That helps us get these videos out to more people just like you that want to learn the jazz language. Please also consider subscribing to this channel, turning on notifications so that you do not miss a video. Thanks so much for watching. We'll see you on the next video. Have a great day, everybody. Bye.